Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G, and today we're gonna play with a new antenna. This is the MFJ, where is it? MFJ 2012, 40, 20, 10, six meter off-center fed dipole. I'm gonna put it up in a tree. Let's get to it. So MFJ recommends to install this at 33 feet off the ground. There's the 34 foot mark, 30, 33 feet to 70 feet. So 33 would be the minimum, so I'm one foot better than the minimum. all the way up into that tree. And it was actually really easy to get up into that tree because I was using my Arborist throw weight and throw line and throw bag to make all this happen. This thing, check out that sack. There's a link in the description down below for the line, the weight, and the bag. So with all the trees in the yard, this is the best setup that I could come up with. We've got a step-in post. You can get those at your local tractor supply up into the tree where I showed you the height install. Right there is the center of it. Then it comes down here to the other side. Okay, so this is interesting. This antenna is a 40, 20, 10, and six meter antenna. Let's try this from the bottom up. Let's go down to six meters. I'm gonna hit the tune button on WSJTX and it'll show you where the antenna is. 2.5, doesn't look very good. You'll notice that the tuner, the built-in tuner in the radio is out. Let's tune her up. Now you can see the internal tuner can handle that just fine. Turn that tuner back off. We're going to go to 10 meters. Same thing, tuner is off. That's not bad at all. Now if the tuner can do 2.5, it sure can do the 1.2 that's there. I'm not even going to worry about that. It's so good. I'm going to move to 20. No tuner at all. Look at that. Whoo! That's just crazy. Let's move to 40. Again, no tuner. Still fantastic. Okay, so now in the website, it starts talking about... Look at that noise floor. There's something going on there. In the, in the website, it talks about how this can be used on 80, but it's not an 80 meter antenna. It's not sold as an 80 meter antenna. It's just something that kind of like anecdotally shows up in the documentation. I don't know why. Let's see what it says. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. That's not very good. Let's run the tuner on that. Yeah, I can't even tune it. It's over three to one. I am gonna try. Uh, there are ways that you can make that tune with a 7300. It's kind of not part of the, the discussion here. Let's go down to 60 and see what it thinks about 60. Well, it would tune 60. That's good. We did 40. What's below 40? 30. It'll tune 30. What's below 30? We did 20, 17. Let's try 17. Turn that tuner off. It'll tune 17. This antenna's looking better and better all the time. 15. Oh. Well, it'll obviously tune it. Let's see what it's like without the tuner. Yep, 2.5. These are bands that this antenna is not designed to work on, so the fact that it's doing this good is really impressive. It'll definitely tune it. I forgot to check that again. I gotta stop doing that. Tune! 2.4? Fantastic. And that brings us back down to 10 and 6. So this thing will tune on my 7300's built-in tuner. It's either already resonant, resident, resonant, or it will tune from 60 meters all the way down to 6 meters. That is just amazing. I love it. I'm not really sure what is more fun, making contacts with a radio or tearing apart radio gear and seeing what makes it tick. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take this thing apart. This is the MFJ 2012. It's an off-center fed dipole. And what that means is that one side of the dipole is longer than the other. <laughs> so it's not fed from the center, it's fed from off-center. Sometimes these things are just easier than we make them out to be. But I want to see what kind of magic in here makes this thing work. Are you ready for the big reveal? I am. Whoo, look at that. This is a very interesting setup. I would have expected this to not be so freeform flowing. This is a one-to-one -one choke. So this is going to remove common mode choke from your dipole feeding down into your antenna system. Some people might call this a ballon because they would say it's going from balanced line to unbalanced line to coax. But I don't know if an off-center fed dipole acts like balanced line or not. We'd have to, we'd have to do some research and figure that part out. This here is a four to one ballon. Pretty interesting design. Well, 
one, two, three, four turns. So we got the left side, we got the right side feeding in, goes around a couple of times and then both sides come out and are attached together. And then they go through the one-to-one, -one, which then goes out to the coax. Fantastic. Plenty of strain relief on the wire on the ends here. Nice, nicely done. This wire is very strong copper. Got the Kyrites KM601 with lots of screen glare from my lights. Put it into continuity mode. Yeah. So this is untreated copper wire. So what's gonna happen after you put this thing up in the air for a while, this copper wire is gonna to start to turn colors and whatnot. It's not really going to affect it all that much in terms of being an antenna. I've got plenty of older copper wire antennas, so I wouldn't be afraid of it. But one of the things that I don't like about it is it kinks and holds a memory. So when you are setting this up, you gotta be real careful not to kink it too much because that'll wind up with some metal fatigue and that will be a spot where your antenna will break in the very, very distant future. So, fantastic. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I got this thing set up in the tree. You can see my diagram right over there, and it's, I, I apologize that it's not the scale. Emmett would be very upset with me. But what we've got is a tree, I know, hard to follow, and we've got an antenna. The red represents how I have it set up in this demonstration, and the black is some extra cordage that I have attached to the end of the elements and then down to those posts that I showed you. And if I didn't have that, first off, this is an off-center fed dipole. So if I didn't have that, this would be the shorter leg and I would have no way to attach it to anything because it would be 15 feet up in the air over my head. And this one here would come nearly straight down. That's probably about as good as I could get it at an angle in order to keep it away from the other element. But you certainly don't want it, you know, straight down like that. That would be that would be bad. So how do you get around that? And the way that I get around it is by attaching a string to the end of it. And you can do this with any dipole in an inverted V configuration. I guess first off, let's talk about inverted V. There's a lot of technology terminology that we use just carefree because we've done this a lot, but it kind of looks like an upside down V. And this is what we mean by inverted V. The center is as high as we can get it. That's where the coax feed point goes. And then the legs, instead of being flat topped, where Whoops, don't do that. Instead of being flat top where they come straight out, nope, that's two degrees, three degrees, zero degrees, where they come straight out like this, which is a much harder install to do, you just slope them gently down to the ground and make this upside down V shape. You can also do a regular V where they go up higher on the outside than they do on the inside centerpiece. That's a little bit more difficult. So that that's a quick what an inverted V is. It's It really is just that simple. My first antenna install I put up as an inverted V, and I didn't even know what I was doing. I just put it up because that was the easiest way to get it in the air. And then my Elmer was like, oh, that's an inverted V. And I was like, "I okay, I, I guess it is. And then I thought about it for a minute and realized that he was talking about the letter V being upside down. So don't be afraid of the terminology. It really is a lot more simple than you think it is. So back to where I was going. I put some cordage on the end of this to get it tied out a little bit more. That also helped even out the lengths so that the inverted V was better ratio to, you know, left side to right side. And then I had this oriented in a roughly north-south configuration. Let's show you what some of the patterns are that we got out of this. And I'm gonna use WSJTX for this. Okay, so the first thing that I did was 40 meter FT8. This was in the evening around 7 p.m. on a Thursday night. It was during one of our Cafe Noir shows on Coffee and Ham Radios. And you can see that I am being heard well over the United States here. Fantastic. I'm also getting a lot of coverage to the south in South America and fantastic signal reports. I mean, we're minus 19 dB down to the, the tip of South America and we're getting plus 13 dB into Canada. So fantastic. You can kind of see the pink blob back here. This is the, the same blob that I get everywhere. And I think this has more to do with the fact that I'm so far north that there's not that many people north of me. And so I don't really get, like, if you were to take this pink blob and flip it upside down, 
we would be into the Arctic Circle. There's no hams in the Arctic Circle most of the time. So I think I think that pink blob pattern is a little deceiving. So that's that's 40 meter FT8 on a weeknight. So this one's even more fun. This is 20 meter FT8 during the day on Friday. And you can see I've got a lot of um, propagation into Japan and I've got that same pink blob action going on, not as much into South America, plenty into Europe. And again, just tons of coverage all over the United States as you'd expect. Let's look at some of these Japanese contacts in a little bit more detail though, because that's pretty awesome. So we've got this one here, JA1 NLX, and I've got a minus 22 and a minus 22. So minus 22 both ways. The bottom of this is about minus 26. So that's about as low as you can go and still be heard. And that's one of the good things about uh, WSJTX digital modes FT8. Uh, but I do get some better signal reports. So that was my first contact into Japan. And as you can see, that was uh, 1245 UTC. This is the second one, JA1IAZ. And I sent a minus 18, I got back a minus 24. So I'm starting to hear them a little bit better. And again, a lot of this has to do with, with band conditions and with station configuration on both ends. My station configuration wasn't the best that it could have been. I don't have this kind of coax. I had to put a bunch of different kinds of coax together to get this thing up. So I'm already fighting that. So again, that's how awesome this is. This guy had a fantastic station, JO1COV. And I sent him a plus zero one and I received back a minus 12. Those are both fantastic numbers for all the way across the globe. And Japan was just rolling in. So I got a, a fourth contact in JE1WMV. I sent a minus three, I received a minus 12. Awesome antenna. This thing did an amazing job. Let's take a look and see what Amazon looks like. Really? Car parts? Oh, there's a radio. There's a 1778 G5 RV Jr. I'll have to do a review on one of those. Okay, so you can find this thing on eBay. There will be a link in the description down below to grab this thing off of eBay. Uh, this is the MFJ Off Center Fed uh, 40, 20, 10, 6 dipole. And as you saw, I can tune it on a lot of other bands really easy with the radio's built-in tuner. And the price is 110 Not bad at all for, for what you're getting here. And the quality of construction. This one looks like it has some different insulators, so maybe you'll get some different insulators out of it. Uh, $12 shipping, and it comes from New York. So that's all I have to say about the MFJ 2012 antenna. This thing was fantastic. I would probably not use it for... Uh, portable in the field, single day operations. It's not the easiest to set up, but it's not it's not terrible. Uh, you just have to bring a lot of stuff with you. I had to bring the uh, Arborist throw bag, throw weight and line. That's all one kit. I had to bring the end posts. Maybe you can get away with sticking that into another tree. I had to bring the cordage. I had to bring the antenna. And then I had to bring some way to cut the tie wraps off and put tie wraps back on it so it doesn't jumble up in the field. I can use some Velcro straps there. Is it bad? Is it difficult? No. I would do like an entire weekend. I would do a field day with this. I would do a you know, a full day activation where I'm trying to like hunt a kilo at, for parks on the air in one park where I'm going to be there for quite a while. This is very band agile as to where I can go. Very easy to tune with the internal tuner. So I'm thinking this is a big win. Either way, there's a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.